The language had its own rhythm and we wanted to honor that. We wanted the musicality of what he was searching for and we wanted to serve that. It was important to all of us to, to be as word perfect as possible because we also loved it. We loved getting to have this opportunity to be a part of a film that was so language focused and that that was its own character. As I looked, I was curious what our last text exchange was before talking about this. And it was from um, August 21st, 2021. And you wrote me, um, helping my folks manage through this insanity, which I assume had to do with, um, with COVID, uh, best as, as they can, writing a lot of random thoughts that so far don't seem connected, but hope that they will be eventually. <laughs> Do you think you were talking about this beautiful movie? Yes. <laughs> wow, Paul, that's amazing. Um, first off, thank you for doing this. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I've been repeating this story so much that I didn't think it was true anymore, but it, that's exactly what happened. I was writing all these random thoughts, and then I realized these random thoughts were actually different characters, and they were different they were siblings in the same family, and they're all under the house, under this one situation. So that's, that's exactly what it was. So it really felt like, I was like, oh, maybe this is an interesting story. I mean, it's all coming from a person, personal experience that I've been living with my parents, but like, okay, I felt like Katie, and I felt like this person, I felt like that person. And then I realized, oh, they're, they're, they're siblings. And then that's what got me, that was like a one night epiphany. And then I started writing the next day. Um, did you ever feel like Javon's character? Uh, well, like somebody jo you had to. I mean, and, and sorry, I mean, maybe I should ask. I should ask Javon. Um, coming into this, so with this bond between these three sisters, when you come into something like this, um, uh, how much did you sort of have an agenda? Like, this is what I'm going to do in this, or how much were you um, working off of? what the other actors were giving you in the moment? Uh, I think it was a combination of, of both things, just because I didn't, I wasn't involved in the in majority of the filming. I came in for a few days, and I was working on something else and came in because I wanted to work with Aza again. He, myself, and Lizzie had worked together before, uh, and I really liked the way that he tells stories, and I wanted to be a part of this. And so when he called and told me about it, I was like just really excited to be, to be a part of it and to get to be a part of this super team. I mean, I'd as as like a viewer of watching you come in though i think you also had strong opinions of of how one approaches the i think there was like a version of it could have been more combative and jovan you came from a place of like no like i i actually think it would be i mean you did you did have like quite a not an agenda i wouldn't say but a strong opinion of how you would ingratiate yourself in this in this situation with these strangers, the two sis the other two sisters. Yeah, of course, and it was something that was very clear, I mean, in the text, and I told Aza of, of my experience of taking care of the elderly as well. Uh, early on, before I started acting, I was working in a senior home, and you're seeing and taking care of 60 people who all have like dementia or, or different ailments, and a lot of them just want somebody to talk to, you know, if their kids aren't always around to come speak to them, and so when I was working in the restaurant portion of the senior place, I had a bunch of grandparents, and it was hard to, to spend time with these people every day and do the little things like cut up their food and, and do specific um, things to prepare their food and things like that and talk to them and get to know them. And then you go into work the next day and they're gone and without you know getting to say goodbye or anything. So it was something that I was familiar with, so I could relate to, to Rachel's you know, plight of, of being there for Vincent the entire time and, and having to deal with changing her course and having to de defend her actions to uh, her sisters that weren't there as often, so. Um, Lizzie, I read that at some point you studied the Moscow Art Theater. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess I was thinking about that because <laughs> of... Um, What's the pivot? <laughs> well, here's the pivot. <laughs> um, I was wondering if, if, you ever, if, you, if you've ever either performed in or if the play Three Sisters if it had come, oh, okay. No, uh, I hadn't. I've only seen it a couple times. Yeah. Um, and beyond that, uh, as I read that, um, that you sort of had the script and then you all sort of committed to the script. Um, is that was that the case, as opposed to sort of you thinking, okay, I'm going to find certain things in the performance, or um, because that that if that is the case, it seems sort of 
what often happens with a play, you know, unless the playwright's there working on it. That's true. That's true. I mean, in this case, and I'm not always like that with with films, but in this case, the script was saying a bunch of things that I felt like I really needed to express and I needed to see and hear. And so that was one of the great unifying things to, to begin with that, you know, these amazing actors that I went to felt similar about it and felt like, okay, well, there's a lot of other things that we can discuss, but this one thing we can leave as is and uh, just figure out how to make it alive within the words that are already printed. Yeah, we wanted to be like word perfect and punctuation as well was it meant a lot to us. And when, when Carrie Coon is running lines with you, <laughs> you <laughs> are word perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, does she correct you if you go? Oh, she you corrects go up? you if you say good instead of well, uh -huh. or yeah, no, it's like it's super specific, uh -huh. um, and it was amazing because we we knew that Aza had written this with such a um, there was the the language had its own rhythm, and we wanted to honor that, and we wanted um, we wanted the musicality of what he was searching for, and we wanted to serve serve that. Or service it, and so it was. It was important to all of us to to be as word perfect as possible because we also loved it. We loved getting to have this opportunity to be a part of a film that was so language focused, and that that was its own character and its own. Um, it was like almost a score of the film in in ways. Um, yeah, I think while you know there is a play like element to it, it was really striking me seeing the ending again here. Um, how you're doing things which shouldn't possibly be done in a play. For instance, when they're um, taking the dad to his armchair and you drop the, the dialogue and play the, and play the music, you know, because I think that um, one can, it, it can almost feel dismissive to say, oh, this is like, has a beautiful aspect of a play as well. Um, is, is this how you, have you worked this way before, Aza, with, with that sort of approach to a script? No, no, truly this was like one of those things. I'm always trying to go the opposite direction with each film and I'm really like very focused. And so one of the things that was exciting about once I realized that this was the same family was the idea of people expressing themselves in ways that I usually don't write. So I usually write with characters that are always holding things back and holding things back. And um, in this case, I just very much wanted to hear, I wanted to give everybody a, a, their chance to say something. So. I wrote it forward without like, uh, you know, I had ideas, I had places that I wanted to hit, but it wasn't like I mapped it out with cards or anything like that. The cards came after the first draft and the difference between the first draft and the final draft wasn't massive in any way. It was just really just trying to, I was trying to chase down a certain uh, effect of like the, the, the weirdness that was happening with time when suddenly something was like very, very clearly gonna happen and there's no escaping it. And it felt like it was having a very, very strange effect on, on time in my own life. Um, were you thinking in terms of repetition of certain things? Like there, there are sort of themes that each of the character has. Even Javon's character, you can tell that from early on, he's wanting to go out there and say something <laughs> um, yeah. and sort of uh, works towards it. But, but each, it felt to me and like each time something would come up, um, whether it be Lizzie's character singing or um, or Carrie's character wanting to get that DNR thing, it, while they were sort of s similar, there was it was accruing new meaning. It was almost like a yeah, no, that that's completely it. This is the only time I've ever thought to do like a a kind of a paper edit of the film beforehand so that I could get a sense of what that rhythm would be and how many angles that I need. So I wound up doing like a color coded version of like for each character a different color before shooting that I could then show to Sam Levy, the cinematographer, and then show them all to whoever wanted to see, which was like, I'm covering it this way because I'm looking to get this type of rhythm. So there's a sense that, hopefully if it works, that you're not feeling the edit so much, but there's actually probably, it's much quicker cutting than anything I've ever done because I'm trying to chase these beats and also this repetition that you're saying, which is like, these themes of like okay, this DNR note, or you know the way. I mean, it's it's one thing for me to like credit to it, but there's all this, also like when I think about Lizzie on the phone, like that's completely Lizzie figuring out how to make those words 
flow and feel very natural. The sitting down on the, going from the sofa down to the floor, that's completely just me watching her do this and going, oh my God, that's, that's perfect. Um, the same way that I think about Javon, just like we talked about that big, you know, kind of round, like going around the room, going, hitting that window, and this kind of balance between showing that you're very f familiar with a place and at the same time not fully challenging, but just saying, like, this is my place too. I understand this is your place, but this is also a place that I've really spent. Like, I want to show you that I, I have my presence here. There's a ghost of me here as well. Um, what kind of notes would Aza give? Um, if you don't mind my asking. That's a good question. Um, I think the way Aza works is more um, like asking of questions instead of uh, can you do this this way? Mm. I think when, when I, first off, when I came into this, I took what I had, which was like woman moves to West Coast She's from New York. She loves the Grateful Dead. And so, like, I came in with, like, okay, so I'm going to have a rhythm, a, a New York affect, but I'm going to have a rhythm. And then I got there, and Oz was like, oh, yeah, it's, like, not working <laughs> in rehearsals. And luckily we had these days, and I was like, oh, shoot. Okay, well, uh, let's scrub-a-dub-dub -dub that and figure out what, to, what, to, what is going to work. And it was about picking up the rhythm and the pace. He had a pace in his mind that I wasn't, understanding and then and then it was about getting on the same language because I mean Oz and I think we have the same cinematic understanding like I understand at least what influenced this film um, as well as other conversations we have as friends about films that we love and uh, filmmakers that we enjoy that we want to like learn like deep find deeper um, and I, uh, that's not even a real sentence, but you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, find deeper is not a thing. Um, but, uh, and so I feel like it was, it was more familiarity uh, of more uh, guiding together than it was like indicating what he, what, what was like a very specific note. Um, like I feel like, for instance, by the way, that was sweet of you to say, going to the floor, you wanted me to go to the floor. Mm -hmm. That was, you wanted that. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> that's very sweet of you, but like you wanted me to go to the floor because you thought like that's her, that was an example of her trying to create these spaces for herself in her home, um, this that's old home. All right, so we'll. <laughs> um, the thing is that what happened is that we'd shoot, I'd have an idea, we'd shoot it, and then whatever my idea was got erased by what they did. And I suddenly it was like, oh, there's the human being. So I had preconceived ideas of things, and I guess one of them was her yes, sinking to the floor. It was. But once you did it, it was completely yours, and I had no claim to it. Yeah, that would, and then I, yeah, and it would, I think every step of the way from working with each other is us doing like a back and forth with one another. Yeah, more that's so, true. yeah. Um, Javon, had you worked with Natasha before? I had never worked with Natasha before, no. It was just Lizzie and Carrie and Aza. And how much time did you have? <laughs> Everyone else, yeah. <laughs> um, did, did, did you, how, how did you sort of, um, did you come in and just instinctively sort of feel what the story was between them? Or, or did you work on uh, with, with Natasha? Or how did that work in terms of figuring out what their, what their history had been? It was definitely more instinctual. Just because, like I said before, the time, I probably could have reached out to Natasha before, seeing as we have the same agent, there would have been access to her. But I think I might have been like a little bit shy in that situation because I didn't know her. Like when we all came on board, it was a text message between me and Lizzie. Like, I was a sent you the script. Maybe. Are you going to do it? <laughs> yeah, duh. I want to do it too. It's like, I can do that. I didn't know Natasha, so I was like, maybe she's not the type that she wants to prepare with her movie boyfriend in that way. Uh -huh. I don't know, I could have asked, I didn't, all right. But, <laughs> but I knew that Aza brought these three fantastic actors in, they're all gonna be prepared, so I just need to make sure that I'm prepared as well. So when I got there, it was like we had been movie dating for a while already. You know, there was no like, hey, what do you feel comfortable with? It was just like, we're lovers, all right, cool, let's do it. And she was great and she made me feel incredibly comfortable. My first filming uh, night of filming was with her. I didn't get to see the other two, uh, and it was it was great. By the time we went to do the tougher scene, I had already spent a day with Natasha, so I already felt like I had that energy to 
to bring that protective spirit over over Rachel. We got to shoot in order. Yeah, that's yeah, absolutely. We shot in order, so that helped a lot too. Um, yeah. I really liked something that you said, Aza, about um, sort of the limitations that were put before you uh, because of uh, production aspects being kind of beneficial. And uh, it, you know, shooting in order certainly is uh, a lot more possible to do if you're in the same location. Um, did you write the film with, with that in mind? Or actually, I guess my overall question is, um, how much were you thinking consciously when you were writing this, or how much were you unconscious? Because, I mean... In the best way, it really seems like you're unconscious <laughs> in a lot of this. I'm sure there's a ton of technique that went into it, but yeah, it's it's a mixture of being, you know, doing this is my seventh feature film and just having all this. Like, I, there's actually an experience to go through, and you with each film, you're deciding, okay, that wound up on screen and that wound up not on screen, and that was effort that didn't go someplace. Also, connecting that production was really part of script writing like that was something that I always thought like in the beginning all right you write a script and you just don't think about the production side of it and you just go wherever your mind's gonna go but that's not really the case like there is that they're completely entwined in a way that I find helpful so knowing that I wanted to shoot on location knowing that I was going to shoot in not a lot of time um and taking advantage of what that means, but also not shooting on a high budget, like just knowing that we could then take advantage of certain things that once there's more money and more locations, you just can't do and scheduling. And, you know, once things we shot over 17 days, so if things get longer, then there's th people have to leave and you have to kind of rearrange things. They're not going to be there for really straight the, all those weeks. In this case, it fit in really well between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, so the truth is, is like, I, I have a sense of those things now when I'm writing or when I'm putting together a film. I'm thinking about the financing, the type of producers that I want to go to, how I want to put it all together. And I'm also kind of just going on instinct, going, trying not to second guess myself. So writing, realizing I was writing for Carrie and Lizzie and Natasha and Javon, it was just like, I'm going to go straight to them and start right there and that's going to be the foundation and then figure out everything else on top of that. And is it true that you gave them physical scripts? That you it, it is that true. It is, no, no, it is really true because I just thought that the, that was the quickest, easiest way to say this is going to be something different that I would, it, would be, it would pop from what may be getting sent to them all the time and just say like this is really going to be approached in a much more physical way, in the way that I, I was inspired by those films for the 90s and that I just felt like this could exist in. It was, it was small enough and... And it did, you know. and it's, I think that's the most inspiring thing being a part of this project was Oz's intention from the beginning of the ethos of like, this is going to be ours, it's going to be small, and this is how we're going to do it, and we're gonna do it outside of the system he knew exactly who he was going to for money there was no announcement that needed to be made there was no need to f raise funds there's there's no pre-sale it was like we're making this super independently this is all that's real what what are the dates if you guys want to join and um i think there's insane liberation that we all felt being able to make something in that kind of creative space that was so private but that's only because aza created it from the get-go that way and like knew from his experience that that's how he had the most creative control. Um, and so I guess like in this time right now where it's so hard to get an independent film financed and uh, the system's kind of like strangely uh, broken and complicated, um, it's, it's incredible that he curated this experience and it's been such a such, I think it's such an important thing to know that also then his investors made their money back when Netflix acquired it and acquired it beautifully and it's giving us 35 millimeter prints that we get a show and giving us our own theatrical release without it going to the service. Like there's so many positive things that have come out of it that is using the system in a different way that I found really inspiring from this whole process. Um, when, you re when you read this script and also sort of in general, uh, if you think he might be interested, are you sort of reading, the, embodying the character at all in your head as you're reading it for the first time, or are you just reading it as a piece of sort of literature and then deciding after? I think every every script's different. 
um, like I read a script today where I was reading it from like a, a point of view of like the, the viewer or something. But when I was reading Oz's knowing that who he had imagined for everything, I was trying to imagine myself. And I always feel like if, if, if it's easier to imagine yourself playing the part, then like you kind of have an understanding of something. Um, and, and I, yeah, so I, I think for this specifically, I was trying to imagine myself playing Christina. Cool. Like so, likewise with you. Likewise for Benji, especially because of the letter that yeah. he provided us uh, with, with the hard copy which, of the script, which I appreciated because I was in England at the time, and when he was telling me that he was sending me the script, I was like, well, I mean, it'll be easier through email because it's going to yeah. take a while to get to, <laughs> to get to me. And Kensington, he's like, I'm going to get you the script. Yeah. So, But to get the script and get it in this big, fat envelope and then to see the letter, it just it touches you in a way. And was the letter are, sort of about why he had written it? And why yes, that's it. exactly what it was and why he thought that I was the person for it and that he wrote this character for me to play. And if I would be so kind to be cool <laughs> to do it. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'm doing it, bro. Like, yeah, it was because it was already understood. Like, I feel like maybe a year or two before I had texted you randomly, like, dude, I just want to work with you again. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, we're, we're cooking something. I don't know. It's going to happen when it happens. And when it did, I was like, yeah, I know I'm going to do it. But I wanted to, you know, I'll read it. But I was going to say yes. Like, come on. Um, as a, uh, you worked again with Diaz on this movie, your partner in, in work and in life and in, in various forms uh, in work. Um, uh, is could you talk for a moment about um, about sort of you know working with somebody or, or sort of like having somebody that close to you who, whose opinion I'm sure you trust and who anyway can you talk about working with Diaz? Yeah, I, I, it's a, her uh, Diaz. We're about to hit 24 years together, um, and uh, she's just the eyes that I trust above, above everything, and just the taste. And it's like we've we've part of our love is really resist uh, like based on our love of films it's so much part of our lives we don't have kids so we really do watch movies all the time and we're going to <laughs> theaters and like we can do that and we like part of living in new york city and we're surrounded by theaters so that's been a constant connection and then she's a filmmaker and uh, you know like we both have been we show each other our work in their most vulnerable states and so she read the very first draft of this um and is able to like, be very, very precise in the things that feel like she's connecting to and things that are maybe unclear, rather than saying, like, this is not working. It's usually like, I understand where you're going with this, but this is not, it is not being communicated as clearly as you think it is. And, um, and then that just continued, especially, I mean, with all the projects, but especially with this, because she also does costumes. She's d deeply involved in all the aspects, the, you know, through the production design, finding the locations. We went to all these apartments together to f figure that out. Um, you know, we put up flyers in all these buildings because I was, like, chasing a certain apartment that I grew up, uh, like, going to as a kid, but, like, not a specific one, but a, a certain type. Um, and then also just the conversation about clothes is such an easy in because it, it creates a ground. So by the time I'm going to the actors, like Diaz and I have figured out what the world exists. So when we just start talking about wardrobe, it's like it helps my conversation, especially with actors. And then, you know, she's there in the edit. Like there, the, the father scene was a big... I did one rough cut screening, which was like quite divisive, just in terms of with with fellow filmmakers, and some were very strong about, oh, this this shouldn't be in there, and then some saying that this should be, and ultimately, um, that scene was probably about four minutes longer, and Diaz went into the edit room with me the next day, saying, okay, like. Because I, I, I was saying how important that scene was for me. Like, I really needed the father to say these things. It's just something that I like, desperately needed. And I needed to, even if it meant alienating and losing people, I just needed to, I needed it. But she's like, okay, if you're going to go for that, then every, really you have to go through every frame and make sure that that's satisfying that particular thing that you need. And that was such a, so by the time I was able to get it down to where it is, I could completely stand behind it, whether it worked for people or not. And then that, all the way through color correction, all sitting all through color correction, making the prints, and it's just like, it's a, it's a, just an incredible 
I'm really movie. happy that you kept it in. It's, it definitely strikes a chord that's nowhere else in the film, and it's a really beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful thing. Um, I, I was maybe closing. Um, wanted to ask whether you have a particular audience in mind when you're making a film, and and also to ask about like your parents and whether you know. I'm assuming they've seen it, but whether you were thinking about what they would think of it, or, or whether you try to put that to the side because they're both artists as well. Sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, they're, they're just, you know, they, I think of this film as one more gift that they gave me. That's really all I can cool. say about that. How about you, Lizzie and John? Um, do you ever think of an audience or a particular audience when you're doing something, or, or not really? I never do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think mostly about the um, the the filmmaker's mind. I think that's like always my number one is understanding their references and what's in their head, and trying to understand how I can best emulate um, what's what's a part of their vocabulary cinematically. Um, and I, I, yeah, no, I never assume an audience, and I never assume what I want people to feel either. Cool. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. Um, well, thank you all so much for coming, and thank you all for being here. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Film Independent. Thank you, Netflix. Thank you, Lizzie Javon. Thank you all for being here. <laughs>